We're here at the LG stand for CES 2016 and I'm joined by Neil Robinson from LG to talk a bit about more technical details when it comes to OLED TV. So I guess the first question, Neil, is how has this year's panel differed from last year's panel? Okay, so there are a number of things that changed, but the main changes that we made were to the phosphor mix. Um, and so uh, in, we, are, we are able to achieve 99% of DCI-P3 this year. Um, there were some large improvements made to the red phosphor. Red phosphor color was not too bad last year, but um, it was being driven quite hard to achieve the brightnesses that we needed, and now it's much more efficient. Um, but re uh, So red is more efficient, green and blue, are narrower bandwidth uh, spectral output, which means that they get closer to the edge of the, uh, the visible spectrum that we can see, and we get to that 99% of DCI-P3. Um, is that what the target you were specifically aiming for in terms of the new, sort of, if you like, the UHD Alliance's premium UHD TV standards? Yeah, so the, the UHD Alliance requires uh, a number less than 99%, but um, uh, I, I don't think we would say that we were targeting P3 necessarily. We need to target the coverage of P3. So it's no good if you have a really wide, you can display lots of different colors, but you can't display P3 because it doesn't overlap. It's kind of shifted off to the side or something. You've got to have the coverage of P3 because that's where most of the content from Hollywood is uh, targeting. Um, I expect in the future that we will go beyond P3, but we'll always try to ensure that if we go beyond, we're always covering P3. Uh, you mentioned briefly a, a brighter image. How does the new panel differ in terms of the old panel when it comes to brightness? So the old panel had a nominal peak brightness of 400 nits, and that's at D65. Uh, so if you didn't calibrate or you'd like to use the vivid mode, then it would achieve a cooler color temperature, but perhaps around 500 nits. Um, the newer panels, uh, we're, we're seeing around a nominal value of 600, so some will be brighter, some will be not so bright. Um, but that again is at D65, so it's uh, an improvement of around 50%. And again, there's obviously the UHD Alliance's specifications in terms of uh, brightness, both in terms of the peak white and also black levels. There's, there are two different standards now, one specifically for OLED TVs. Uh, and clearly, again, I guess you were trying to hit a specific target there? Yeah, so it wasn't intended to be specific for OLED. It's you know any technology that can achieve the, co the very, very high contrast ratios um, is uh, able to meet the standards with a lower peak brightness. Um, like I said, our nominal peak brightness was uh, 600 for this year, um, and some panels may be lower than that, so the number is uh, gives us some safety to ensure that we definitely do meet the standards, exceed the standards. Um, but uh, but yeah, that, that's the, the rationale behind it. We do, of course, had to meet that standard. Uh, obviously, the reason everyone's talking about brightness and black levels yeah. is because of dynamic range and dynamic range, higher dynamic range, HDR. In terms of HDR, what's your take on HDR? Because um, there's a lot of confusion, I feel, about HDR in terms of people think it's just about brightness. Clearly, that is not the case. It's about dynamic range, black to white. What's your take on HDR personally? That's a, that's a good question. Uh, Dynamic range itself means the difference between the darkest to the lightest. And so theoretically, you could say, OK, I have a darker image, um, overall darker. But there is something to be said what, by the fact that we, as humans, we sort of hook on to what is the normal brightness of something by picking familiar objects like faces, skin tones, and how bright is grass normally, those kind of things. And if you make everything way too dark or way too bright, then it starts to look artificial. So within reason, you can expand your dynamic range and uh, not go mega high in brightness, but you do have to have some increase in brightness over SDR. I'm not sure that you'd be able to create a you know, million to one contrast ratio, but only 100 nits peak brightness and then have the same effect as if you had a very, very high contrast ratio and five, four, four, five, 600 nits. You need to get up to a certain point before it starts to become impactful. There are a number of different HDR formats uh, available. Um, what formats does the LG OLED TV support and why? So this year we are adding support for Dolby Vision. Um, at the end of last year, we did firmware updates to the, uh, the UHD models that we had um, to add HDR10 support. This year, all of the OLED range will support Dolby Vision and HDR10. And why? We, we want to... Uh, Able, be able to offer consumers the ability to watch any content that's available in this uh, HDR uh, standards that are coming out. Some content providers have uh, 
stated that they would like to use Dolby Vision, others have st said that they want to use uh, HDR10 and so we just want to be in a position where we can provide support to consumers for everything. Um, there, uh, sorry, <laughs> just to add, uh, we are also aware that there are other HDR formats. The BBC is working on a standard called Hybrid Log Gamma. Um, we've done a lot of work with that, but it's something that's not standardized yet. There's no signaling for it. But um, as those come online, we will certainly be adding support for those as well. Um, all this talk about increasing the brightness of the panel, driving it harder, I guess. Will that have a detrimental effect on its lifespan or on things like image retention? Yeah, if you do just drive it harder, then it will have uh, an effect on lifetime. And that's why, um, you know, last year we were at 400 nits. We could have produced a display that was 1,000 nits or maybe not 1,000, but brighter than 400, but it would have had a detrimental effect. What we're doing this year with the new phosphor mix doesn't have that detrimental effect. So, you know, we, we could do that, but it, that's not the right way to do it. Uh, last year's models did have a number of issues. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, have you addressed the issue of vignetting with the new uh, panels this year? So it's not so much a, a addressing of uh, a panel technology, but we've changed some of the uh, quality controls that are uh, employed in the manufacturing, um, where we take re uh, readings from multiple different areas, and uh, during this is all LG display uh, technology because the panel comes from LG Display, um, but uh, some of that quality control and measurements and, and how the digital to analog converter is um, set up for a, each specific panel in manuf manufacturing has um, been designed to address that problem, yes. Uh, aside from the dark edges of the vignetting that I mentioned, there's also been an issue with the banding just above black. Uh, how is that being addressed? So I have been told that that has been improved for this year. Um, I had been asked by another journalist if that was 8-bit near black and 10-bit above. That's certainly not the case. It is a 10-bit panel with 10-bit across the range. Um, there is a, an inherent, um, the, way, the operation of OLED technology itself, there is a, a threshold at which you apply current and it starts to switch on. And so there are various ways that we go about addressing that and uh, the 2016 panels should be improved over 2015. I did mention the, uh, the banding just above that, but there's also some vertical banding uh, visible at other brightness levels as well. Do you want to comment on that? Yeah, so the same quality control measures that were employed to improve the vignetting that you mentioned uh, should eliminate that as well. Obviously LG are the dominant player when it comes to OLED, but there are other manufacturers with OLED TVs in the marketplace, specifically Panasonic. And I realize that Panasonic are using an LG panel, but they were claiming that the way they were driving the panels and improving things like vignetting. Uh, do you want to comment on that? So, uh, as far as I know, Panasonic has a relationship with LG Display. Um, I work for LG Electronics, and uh, because of confidentiality between LG Display and Panasonic, I don't actually know anything about their relationship. Um, it, I suppose it's possible that they could have done something like that, but um, it's something you'd have to talk with LG Display about. Neil, thank you very much. You're very welcome.